All right, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and jump in and uh, start the program. Uh, we might get a few stragglers to come in, but that's totally fine. Um, you guys are welcome to have your cameras on or off. Um, this is really very informal. I just want you guys to feel relaxed, enjoy your lunch. Um, today, we have Mike Ensley with Ensley and Company. Um, they are a social media management company here locally in Wenatchee, and we have the opportunity to hear from Mike today on some of the different uh, content that you can curate for your business to really engage your social media audience. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to pass it over to Mike and he will get started with the presentation. Oh, Mike, looks like you're muted. I am muted. Now I'm not. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. I'm going to try to share my screen. How are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> we step one, share the screen. That's all it takes. Um, okay, yeah, so well today what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about um, creating social media that stands out. Um, this day and age, it's, it's pretty hard to do. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we see, um, we glance over and, and a lot of times it comes down to, um, are we talking about ourselves too much? Um, I'll use the, the Thanksgiving analogy is that we all have that relative at the Thanksgiving dinner that all they do is talk about themselves. Um, so people stop listening. So how do you talk about yourself or your community so that people do listen? Um, so that's what we're going to be spending some time doing. Um, again, my name is Mike Ensley. I'm with Ensley and Company, uh, a fancy name for my wife and I work together. Um, the end company part is a cute way of us saying that we sub a lot of work out. So um, we do work with some other folks and web developers, content development, graphic design, um, but it is just my wife and I. And so we work with a lot of local businesses here in the Valley and beyond, um, organizations, nonprofits, uh, restaurants, photography, video, social media, websites. This day and age, uh, marketing, a there's a lot of social media work that people, people spend time on. So that's, we do a lot of that for, um, for businesses in the Valley. Um, we have an office in the Mercantile, so I'm in a phone booth inside the Mercantile, so I might sound a little weird. Um, I don't know if it's echoey or not, but um, that's not what my voice normally sounds like if that is the case. So um, before we kind of, before we get started into some of the local examples or some of the examples that I've, I've put together for you all, I do want to spend a little bit of time on planning. Um, if you've ever heard Jackie and I speak, um, you will have heard us talk about the importance of planning. And essentially, as with anything in our business or our organization, uh, what planning does is it puts us in a proactive state, right, rather than reactive. And in, in the social media world, what reactive does is you say to yourself, and, and, and this happens, this happens all the time, and it's because we're wearing a lot of hats, if we are in a reactive state with social media, we have a tendency to talk about things that are the low hanging fruit. And that's typically talking about ourselves. So I'll give you an example as if it's been a week and you say, oh man, it's been a week since I've posted anything. Uh, I'll post another picture of a sandwich because I have one in my phone and I'll post it and I'll move on. And that's because we're busy. But what that is, is that, that also it takes more time to end up doing that. So we stress planning uh, frequently to all of our clients, um, and it's a part of our process when we work with our clients. Um, but then, then we'll kind of go through this quick checklist. This is just to kind of brush up a little stuff on, on some stuff is to, to you know, understand your messaging, understand what you're trying to accomplish with your, with your messaging, um, understanding your audience. Um, you, that there's a different audience between a transmission shop and a coffee shop. So understanding what those two are and, and, and essentially how you want to speak to them. Um, understanding your voice and personality. I'll use the coffee shop and transmission shop as an example, as if you've got, um, you know, hipster images from downtown Portland and you're a transition shop and then your customers show, show up and you have to, they have to walk through a, a maze of 55 gallon barrels to get to your shop. 
it's going to tell them a different story. That doesn't mean you're not the best transmission shop in the valley. It just tells a different story. So you just want to make sure you find your authentic voice. Um, you also want to spend a little bit of time talking about and thinking about the marketing platforms that you're going to want to do primarily with the brand awareness work that we do in the area. It comes down to Facebook and Instagram really here. Um, those are the two platforms. I mean, TikTok's coming in and out. Of course, there's there's that. We don't do much in it. Um, some of the B two B, the business to business work we do, will will also include LinkedIn. Um, but we're going to spend our time today talking about uh, Facebook and Instagram, um, and then just kind of having a general content overview. What do you want to talk about? Um, for the items that you do want to talk about when you're spending some time talking about yourself. What's that going to look like? And then when you want to talk some talk about things that are relevant to your business or community, what does that look like? So you have these general guidelines laid out so that you can jump into that space and you can get a lot of good proactive content work done. Um, streaming, streamlining the process, pick a day each week. It's as simple as that. It's like, it's, it, again, social media messaging and planning is the same as anything else. Pick a day each week a regular time to do it and it'll save you a lot of time. You can work on the whole the whole week. You can finish a whole week of, of content uh, in half an hour or less if you've got a process set up and you're, and you're consistent with it. Um, and then the consistency, figure out how many times you wanna post throughout the week and, and stick with it. Um, and when you have, when you're not talking about yourself the entire time, there's an entire world of free content out there. Okay, so. Essentially, what we're going to do is today, the, the examples that I'm going to give you um, of, of posts that I have found to be engaging uh, are on Facebook and Instagram, like I mentioned earlier. Um, as you dive into these platforms, you really want to have a good understanding of how your, of how your uh, content, your imaging, your copy presents itself to the audience. Um, a great example, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit outdated, but there was um, back in the day when Twitter would truncate, I think it's 72 characters, people will just auto-populate their, their content from Facebook uh, to Twitter, and it would, it would cut the content off after a certain amount of characters, and there were some really, really unfortunate mess-ups on that, where Twitter decided to cut the message off at a very inopportune time. Um, so just understand that there's a there's you know different ways of of uh, presenting on each one of the different image sizes that type of thing, um, and then understanding the vernacular. Um, you know it's like brevity is becoming more of a thing now on uh, Instagram. Instagram has always been visual, but um, in regard to copy, long form usually people don't people don't read it. They want to see the image. Um, Facebook they might have a little bit more. Um, they might be a little more inclined to to review stuff. Um, and then also as you're, when you're on these platforms, it's just a good idea to participate in conversations. You know, there's, uh, you know, the Together Wenatchee page, I think is a really great um, example of this kind of these online communities and, and providing value. So, um, you know, just being a part of the, being a part of the ecosystem. Um, so let's talk about what, what is social media engagement? Um, essentially, what I ref when I'm referring to this, I'm just talking about some kind of interaction between the audience and the brand, regardless of what brand that is, what kind of brand that is. Um, and so the, the, this, the, the low hanging fruit for most platforms is, is likes, comments, and shares. And that's like in Facebook, that's the, those are the easy ones. There's certainly more to that, but those are the easiest ones. And um, essentially what this does is it allows for your customers to participate in your story. Um, you know, and likes, comments, and shares, shares, and comments might have a little bit more power over likes. Uh, the algorithm's changing all the time. Um, you know, as you go down the down the way, each platform has its own algorithm, um, but typically they all come in the form of the likes, comments, and shares. And Twitter, it's retweets, likes, and replies. Um, but then it goes beyond that too, in that you can interact with your customers through DMs, direct messages. Um, they can provide reviews, they can check in. They can tag you. Um, so there's there's lots of ways for customers to interact um, and likewise for the brand to interact. Um, and essentially what this, this does is it allows for an emotional connection to what you're doing. Um, and it provides some, some brand loyalty. And we'll talk about that here in, in a little bit. So um, 
Something else too that I don't know, Rosa, did you mention, if anybody has any questions, please just do the little hand thing or whatever that little hand emoji thing is. It's like, I, if you spend any time with me, you'll know that I'm an informal guy. And so don't- Yeah, don't so if anyone has questions, just use the little chat box down there or um, the little emoji that raises your hand. So, um, so why is this important? So I like this line. I read this line the other day, without engagement, social media is just media. The newspaper is the newspaper, it's static. You read something and you get informed or not. Uh, the nice thing about social media is it's taken that interaction to a new level. Um, there's, I look at this in two ways. There's the tangible and intangible, right? So the tangible, uh, importance of social media engagement is you're working inside the ecosystem of the algorithm to increase your reach. What that does is that the, so let's just talk about Facebook. If you like a post on Facebook, you're telling Facebook that you're interested in more content from this particular page or organization down the road. And the more that happens, the more that organization gets exposure. Back in the day, if you posted, anybody that followed you, if you posted something on, on Facebook, everyone that followed you got that post. And classic marketers ruined it all by inundating the timelines with, with business stuff, buy this, buy that. And so Facebook kind of put their hands on the wheel and decided that they're going to come up with an algorithm. And it does make sense. Like, you know, it kind of took away from the experience. So it's, it's, all about increasing your reach, increasing your brand awareness. But what it, the, the intangible part is that this does, like we talked about before, is it creates an emotional connection, right? So um, it strengthens your customer relationship, which then in turn increases your brand loyalty. Um, so the, the two-way street here is that, you know, if you're increasing brand loyalty and, and um, a, an open communication with your customers, you can learn from your customers to kind of help make their experience more valuable to them. Um, so, so it's definitely a two-way street. So let's talk about some local examples and some ideas that, um, and these are, there are a lot more ideas and examples out there. These are ones that, these are kind of the low-hanging fruit per se. I've mentioned that, I've said that word too many times. I'm going to come up with a different one. Um, these are the, these are the easy ones to come up with. So, um, giveaways, uh, these are easy. Um, and I do have, uh, you know, a couple of general guidelines when, when we do these, um, you know, there's the Sweetwood is the, is, is a great example. Um, this was for, uh, an outdoor concert at the pack. They, they were giving away some stuff, uh, for tickets to the concert. Um, and this was, uh, a benefit show for vets serving vets. So it was a really cool opportunity to help promote the event and to help raise some money um, for a local organization. So um, the Tracy, Tracy Dry gave away some, uh, gave away a gift certificate to Atlas. Uh, what I really like about these two opportunities is it's not giving away something from you, right? It's not giving, it's not something, that Tracy's giving away from her organization. It's helping a local business. That's what I really like about these two examples is that it's outside of what they're doing. Uh, it's about the community. Um, one of the things that I will caution you about is that it's important to know the rules. That, and, and I'm just talking about Facebook in this example, um, is there are pretty strict rules about, about posting uh, contests online on Facebook. And so, for example, you cannot ask, sharing on somebody else's page cannot be a requirement. They, they prohibit that. Um, and you have to explicitly list, you'll see the fine print on Tracy's email is that um, this giveaway is not associated with Facebook in any way. That's just some of the disclaimer language. These rules are all pretty simple. Um, when you read them, they might not be, but it's what we've been kind of one of the general, the general rules is you're going to be pretty safe if you say like and comment and, and give and make the comment, make it fun. Don't just say your, what's your favorite color and then like this post and move on is that, you know, I've seen Benjit Sweetwood do, um, you know, where are you going to enjoy this 
this barbecue meal we're giving away, who are you going to share it with? And they'll, and they'll post on there and they'll say, make sure to share this with your friends so they can follow the rules and enter too. That's a way of saying sharing isn't a requirement, but we'd love for your friends to have an opportunity as well. Um, so I put down here, it's like, know the rules and don't take my word for it. Look those up when you do it. Um, don't hold me responsible for that. You heard, you heard me say that. Um, and now also monitor the activity throughout. So there's always a difference between idea and reality. And I'm, there's a couple of examples that, that, um, that I have in mind. And there is, a, there is a, photo, a photo magazine that I follow on Facebook. And they were giving, it's like, you know, sign up to become a, an ambassador for our magazine to, to learn the trade of outdoor photography. And there was some, there was a paid campaign. So this stuff was popping up in my feed quite a bit. And, and people dove into the fine print and realized that, well, really what they're doing is they're looking for free content for the magazine. It's essentially, yeah, become a photo ambassador and you can take all these beautiful photos and we're going to use them for free. So it was a really challenging way. And, 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 and they weren't monitoring the activity of their posts. They were getting all of these photographers were commenting negatively about the spirit of this giveaway or this contest online, and they weren't monitoring that. Um, I do notice now, I went back to their feed just before I came on here, and I did notice that those posts are also in their timeline and they've deleted all the comments. So it's just a really weird way to approach it. So in, in Monitoring the activity throughout the campaign will allow you to be on the front end of that. There's another local example. There was a giveaway, and I can't remember. There's a there another magazine. There was a <clears throat> I want to say Powder Magazine was giving away a couple nights in Leavenworth and two days of skiing at Stevens Pass. And the picture in their their Facebook ad was not Stevens Pass. It was somewhere else. It was like Grouse Mountain, like a night shot of Grouse Mountain in downtown Vancouver. And the second I looked at the post, I knew immediately it wasn't Stephen's past. And <clears throat> so did everyone else. So did all the people that were commenting on it. <clears throat> Hundreds of comments that that photo was not Stephen's past. And they let it run. And they probably didn't notice that until they were like, well, time's up. For, time for us to draw something. And then they realized they had the wrong photo on it. So it's just a good idea to keep an eye on things. Um, Another local, these are two local examples. So the one on the left is the downtown association. Um, people love people. Uh, if you show a picture of a sandwich and you show a picture of people making the sandwich, my money would be on the people making the sandwich, getting more interaction than just the sandwich of really low, low to the ground, low elevation example. Um, these are two, uh, so the downtown association has this thing where they go around the community and they share about <clears throat> downtown businesses. And it always includes the human component of those businesses. And that's important, it, it humanizes the business. Um, people just, it's just, up, it's magnetic. Um, the example of Fibonacci, that's Dr. Milner at his birthday, and <clears throat> he's blowing out candles. It's a great example of a casual moment in a dental office. And, you know, the picture on the left is a goofy picture. And then the picture on the right is him blowing out the candles. It's, it's great. People love it. Um, so whenever you have an opportunity to talk about staff, talk about board members, and, and provide a little bit of fun to it, if you can, I think that's great. And people love it. So generally speaking, this is always a good, a good route to go. Um, sense of place. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, we work, live and play in the Wenatchee Valley. And it's one of the, in my opinions, one of the most beautiful places in the world. I think we can all agree on that. Something that um, I've noticed is, uh, let's use McGlynn's public house as an example. For the longest time, the owner of McGlynn's used the McGlynn's Facebook page to post his personal pictures of the valley, never once mentioning anything about coming to McGlynn's. And that might have been the result of starting the page back in the day and transitioning it to the McGlynn's page, changing the name and using it still a little bit more of a personal, personal page. But 
if you go through the content of McGlynn's, you will notice very quickly that probably every fourth post, there is a beautiful picture of the valley. And um, this just provides a connection. It provides a sense of place. And this particular one, in the moment, a beautiful rainbow that went over the valley. He went up, found a, a beautiful perspective and posted it. And if you look down on the, on the likes, comments, and shares, it went through the roof. And rightfully so, because beautiful photos of where we live, people are proud of that. And one of the things that that you will see a lot of people do and like look at like a lot of the a lot of the, the the leadership coaches so like take tony robbins simon sinek those guys when when they they'll put up a they'll put up a, a tile and it'll be something that's just super inspirational and super easy to share you click share and it goes up on your page so this this particular example of the rainbow over the valley it's coming down under the confluence of the of the columbia and the wenatchee look at how many people shared that People are extremely proud of the place that they live in, and this grounds them in that. So this is a great example. This is one of the best examples in the, in the area that I can come up with. Um, it's just really well done, and this photography is beautiful. Um, another simple example is the, the one from Davis. This is downtown. Um, if I, when I look at this picture, I see a historic building. I see a, a bronze sculpture in the middle ground. In the foreground, I see a fountain. And I, what I... So I, I put myself in this place and I can actually smell the pizza coming from Saddle Rock across the road. Um, right behind this is the, is the sidewalk that runs down to the bridge that goes over the railroad tracks. This, this is also an example of sense of place. It puts you in a place and it doesn't have anything to do with, with buying a sofa or a mattress from Davis Furniture. It has everything to do with taking pride in the community they are part with. So this is a, this is a fantastic way to get people to interact with your content. So here's a not local example. And this is also one of my all time favorites. Um, so polls are a really good way to get people to interact with your brand. So a good example is if I've got a new chicken sandwich and say, um, I've got three particular names of the sandwich that I'm thinking about, vote on your favorite and people vote. And gives them, gives them some pride. Oh, that's the one I voted on. Okay, whatever. And we've seen that happen. Um, Banjit Sweetwood has done that. And it's, and it's been really fun and people love it. Um, and some of the names are goofy. Um, some are spot on. And the, the trick with polls is you need to be very careful about how you approach them. And I'm going to talk through, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this out loud on a presentation, but it's my favorite. Bodie McBoatface is the cautionary tale that I'm gonna share with you. And some of you may know about this already, but this happened in 2016. And, and essentially it's, it's, a, it's a government agency in England. It's essentially their version of NOAA. Um, they just launched a new research vessel, like I'm guessing a hundred million dollar research vessel in, um, in their fleet. And so they decided that they wanted to uh, put it out to the social media world to run a contest to name the boat for them. And Bodie McBoatface won. And, and, I'll, and I'll give you an example of, of how, this, how, how this, took, this took on a life of its own. And it's fascinating. Bodie McBoatface, I can't say it with a straight face. Bodie McBoatface got 129,000 votes. The next one was 34,000. So they ended up with a bit of a PR mess on their hands because they couldn't name this research vessel Bodie McBoatface. But the problem with that was is that everyone expected it to be voted Bodie McBoatface. So they had people protesting outside their offices because of the lack of transparency on this. And I can imagine, I can reverse engineer the, the decision-making pathway is they said, well, let's just put it up. What should we name it? Well, let's just put it out to social media. Okay, go make it happen. And then hand it down the chain. And somebody said, all right, name the vessel. And then they moved on. Well, it truly did take on a life of its own. And this kind of goes back to monitor the activity throughout. 
this thing ended up becoming a, a big a big mess. So, it, I mean, an ex, as an example, the previous vessels were named after like naval heroes and like Arctic explorers and stuff like that. And so here they're stuck with Bodie McBoatface. What they ended up doing as a bit of a consolation prize is there's a submersible that, that lives on this boat. Uh, it's like a little yellow submarine. And so they named, um, they named the, the submarine Bodie McBoatface. Um, but this is a great example. So it's, it's important to make sure you're framing your rules right so that it doesn't run amok on you. And these things can, um, they absolutely can. Um, so what are other examples? Um, let's see, am I going on a question? Now, here we go, other examples. Um, so we, th this kind of falls in the line of, um, you know, creating content that encourages engagement. This isn't, and it's not easy to do. Uh, there's so much, there's so much content out there this day and age that it, it is difficult to stand out. Um, the examples that I gave you, uh, even Bodie McBoatface uh, encouraged a lot of engagement, the bad kind, but it did. So, so, so how can you do that? And those examples that I gave you locally are great ones. Um, I've seen this even outside this community of, of taking an organization that is well-loved and uh, by the local audience. Um, and then when we post something that isn't about them, but it's about the community, the community responds um, in mass. It's, it's fun to watch. And, and, and that's also that post about the community, all of these things, they're selfless, right? You're not trying to get anything back. Like the, the McGlynn's post is a great example. It didn't say, enjoy the rainbow and then come in and have a, our new salad. Um, it just said, check out the rainbow. We live in a beautiful place. Um, so when this comes down to, you know, when you're not talking about yourself, what are you talking about? Um, so what are other examples? So um, reviews uh, are a great example of ways that people can interact um, with your brand. And this is a two-way street, both the good and the bad. It's important to respond to them. A lot of times what we do is we only respond to the bad ones, right? And it's all hands on deck. we got a one-star review. Well, dive in there and see what happens, see what you can learn from. But when the, when the, the good reviews roll in, tell them thank you and you appreciate it. And don't have a canned response to that either. Make it relevant, make it and, and tie the content. So if somebody says, hey, I bought a new pair of skis today and I took them up for the first time up at Mission Ridge and there was two inches of new snow, and I loved them. You guys nailed it. Thank you. So glad you got to get a, get after the new snow up at Mission Ridge today. Wish we were up there. Glad you liked them. So it's not just a, just a thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Just a canned response. Make it personal. Um, comments. Sometimes, sometimes comments don't need to be responded to because your audience will respond to them. Um, and we've seen this before where somebody jumps in and says something a little weird and their comment speaks for them, speaks for itself. And, and your, your audience sometimes will step in and, and, and I, in the example of a, of a bad comment, sometimes your, your community will step in and, and defend you. But um, sometimes it's just best to hide them or delete them. And sometimes you have to block them. But Good and bad comments. Again, this goes back to what can we learn from our online audience to uh, to help create a better experience for us and them. Um, we've seen people do discounts for for those that check in. A lot of restaurants is like check in and you'll be and, and show it to your show it to your server and you can get ten percent, fifty percent off your off your um, off your meal. Uh, if you're tagged in a, like Instagram, for example, if you're tagged in a post, somebody goes to your restaurant and they tags you and they had a great time or whatever, you can share that to your stories. Um, you can reach out to them and say, I'd love to repost this with your permission. I'm so glad that it's a beautiful picture and I'm so happy that you enjoyed your time. That goes a long way. It's, people love it. Um, it's just a way of saying, thanks for coming in and we really appreciate you sharing our story with, with your followers. Um, so one of the things that this isn't necessarily promoting engagement, but um, on your own page, 
but it's helping other pages engage. So what I mean by that is let's use an event, uh, let's a festival of trees, uh, it's coming up. Um, one way to help the community, one way to help the Numerica pack is to share that, share that Facebook event, share about it, talk about it. That helps their reach. So it's, it's, this kind of goes back to the two-way street comment is that there's a lot of free content out there. And that's the, that's the selfish part about it. You don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about content when there's already good content, but it helps someone else out. And, and it doesn't need to be like, I'll share this if you share one of mine. Just share it because it's good for the community. It's good for them. Um, you know, you can go through and on your planning document, you can state, these are the five organizations that I want to share content from, from whenever possible. It could be the Chelan Douglas Land Trust. It could be the Humane Society. It could be the Wenatchee Valley Chamber networking events. Um, it could be the What's for Lunch with Mike Ensley. How many of you did that? No? No, you did. So yeah, I, I well, there might have been others, but I could only see you on the screen. Um, and then again, what I mentioned before is the create content that is easily shareable. The photos from McGlynn's is a fantastic example. Um, you know, if there's a, a quote that you love, quotes or, or people love inspirational quotes. Um, and I've seen that, I've seen those take on a life of their own where somebody posts something and it's just something that's easy for someone to share. It makes them feel good and, and it takes on a life of its own. So look for opp opportunities to do that. Um, and then be authentic, be yourself and make sure that you're, and, and be yourself as yourself and your organization. I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be yourself, but um, your organization has a voice and, and speak to that. So um, it's, all, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, Kind of going back to what I had originally talked about is that when we're looking at opportunities to create engagement, um, being in a proactive state is one of the best ways to do that. Um, you know, and like that, the, in, in an example of the sandwich versus the, the person making the sandwich, getting a, a great photo of a person making a sandwich is probably going to take you a little bit longer but it's probably going to get a little more engagement than, than the static photo of the sandwich that you have saved in your phone. So think about opportunities that you can do um, ahead of time to put you in the space to give you the best opportunity for social engagement. Um, and that's really comes down to the planning section. The first part that we talked about is that, you know, gathering photos, gathering links, who are the organizations you want to keep an eye out for? Um, if somebody, if somebody sends out an email and says, is there any way possible that you could, we've got this sale coming up. Could you post this 100%? I will absolutely post it every time. Um, and don't expect anything in return. Just, I'm happy to help at all times. Um, keep an eye on the daily activity. This kind of goes back to the Bodie McBoat face. I'm going to try to say that as many times as I can. Um, and I don't know if I'll be able to find another opportunity, but, um, and then try to make the process fun that there's um, a lot of the questions where you, can, where you can ground the conversation and the content itself. And I'll go back to Benj at Sweetwood. Um, people love barbecue. You're heading into the weekend and it's like, yeah, again, who are you going to enjoy this with? You know, tell us your favorite. We're giving away a bunch of wings for Super Bowl. Who do you have? Who do you have as a favorite? What's your favorite Super Bowl halftime performance of all time? Um, those types of questions that, that aren't just, again, favorite color in the comments. Thanks for playing. Um, so, questions. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about Bodie McBoatface? I got one more in. One more of those in. No? I'm not seeing any questions come through. <laughs> Lacey said Bodhi. <laughs> What's that? Lacey said Bodhi. <laughs> <laughs> Bodhi McBoatface. <laughs> there was another one. So on that similar notes, there were some other government organizations and in Australia right after the research vessel fiasco. Sydney, I want to say, um, 
Sydney, Australia tried to get away with something by renaming one of their boats uh, Ferry McFerry Face. It was a public public ferry, and it again, it didn't it didn't work very well. Um, so it's just being like with the polls, especially, you know, give them three options, three that you think are acceptable, and don't and don't say the one with the most votes wins. It's like the ones with the top five votes we will consider and our board will choose. Uh, you know, just to kind of avoid that, the, like the, the lack of transparency thing. So um, hopefully we don't have any Bodie McBoat face issues here in the Valley. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I'm gonna say that. Um, Maybe. I have a question for you, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna jump in um, and ask, but so let's say we have an event or we have like a video that we really wanna get high engagement on, but we don't have a budget for boosting. How can we like bring awareness to that content to get people to like look at that IG reels or look at our YouTube page? Do we just continue to push out the same thing or do I need to create graphics for like every new post that I make about that? How do I? So let's, I mean, let's just use YouTube as an example. If you have a new film coming out, let's, I mean, the Visit Wenatchee has done a lot of great stuff. And, and let's say that there's a, a piece promoting vacation, coming to, to the Valley to vacation, right? A good way to, to expand your reach on something like that, it's a, typically with a lot of stuff is, is, you know, post it and forget it, right? And just hope that you get eyeballs on it. One of the things with video, and especially when you have something that is housed on a platform like YouTube or Vimeo, is you can come up with I, what I've seen done and what I've participated in and, I, and I've driven myself is to come up with a, you know, a community partnership list, right? As you say, these are, these are the 15 organizations that I've kind of procured that will that are always willing to help me with stuff and send them an email in advance and say hey hey guys it's me uh we've got a we've got a video coming out and we're going to launch it on on wednesday uh, wednesday the 15th give them a week or two weeks and say we would love it if you could share it on your social media platforms uh here's some sample copy that you can use and here's the link um and if you could post it on the 15th, that would be fantastic. And if you know of anybody that would be interested in posting this, that would be great. It's good, this video is gonna be great for the Valley. So each project, that list could be different. Um, you know, if you're doing an event, a, a bike event, you know, let's just use the, um, the downtown crit of the Tour de Bloom. They do the bike races in downtown. That list of community partners is gonna look different than, um, the opening of Rocky Reach Dam Visitor Center, right? So you can put together this list. And the nice thing about, I talked earlier about sharing other people's content is that develops a bit of social capital for you is that, hey, I'm always willing to help. And, and don't think for a second that I need anything in return. If you have something, absolutely send it my way. Um, and and if I have something else in it your way, no hard feelings if you can't, but it'd be great if you could. And what that does is that allows you for your link to get out there pretty quickly. And you know, like that, you know, so for example, if like w Mission Ridge has a huge following and an engaged audience, if you put something on their page, it's going to be, it, you're going to get a, a decent response back to your YouTube channel. Um, but that doesn't mean that a smaller organization, you know, like Arlberg wouldn't be beneficial too, because these things can take on a mind of their own. So have a nice cross section of, of kind of audience participation that can help you with that, with that distribution. That's just one thought. Okay. Thank you. We have a question from Joanna. Um, she says, we do weekly videos for our site to bring information to the community about our services and what's going on in the community. Do you have any ideas on how we can get people more engaged? At times, it feels pretty much the same information being shared. I was thinking collaborating with other organizations or having others join us in our videos, although we don't want to venture off our mission message. 
Good question. I think that this kind of comes down to sometimes there's such a thing as too much consistency, right? If you're posting the same thing every Monday, and, I'm, and I don't know what it is that you're posting, but let's just use this as an example, is if I post a video uh, about the same thing every Monday, then that can get a little bit repetitive. Um, one of the things that we, um, we often try to do is try to stay away from the cut and paste is that if you're trying to get a message across, maybe you do one video a month and then you do one um, Instagram story a month and then you do one static photo a month and then you do one link to your webpage a month so that it's, it's mixing up that message. And if one of the things that will always help your reach is to diversify, and I'm, let's just talk about Facebook, for example, if you diversify your content, you're going to have a better opportunity at, at increasing your reach. Because if you look at the, the Facebook insights, links don't perform quite as well. Native posts will always perform better than links. So if you have a video, let's just say a video goes up on YouTube, that YouTube link won't perform as well as a video that's posted natively onto your platform. Um, so take a look at that as well. And likewise, this goes back to the planning. The planning component is that when you are looking through your weekly content, Make sure that you're not posting all links. Make sure that you're not posting all photos. Make sure that you're not just posting one particular kind of content because the, the algorithm could be, for, could be performing negatively on a particular kind. Like right now, links aren't doing quite as well. So you wanna make sure that if you go and look back, you might find that sharing links is what you've always been doing. And it might not be getting you quite as much of the reach as you would like. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Um, I have a few more questions for you. Uh, Lacey has a question. She says, I love the local examples. Thank you, Mike. What's your take on live streaming and what are your preferences for posting frequency in the Valley? So the first part of the question was live streaming? Yes. Okay. Um, um, so and then the second one was was, Frequency. Okay. Um, truthfully, again, back to Facebook. I'll just use that as an example. I'm not exactly sure what kind of stream you're looking at, but Facebook Live was a very big deal for a long time. And then, um, and, and I can't speak to how it's doing right now, but I'm not seeing a lot of it. Um, you know, when there are, I think it kind of depends on the content that you're going after. Uh, during COVID, the, the health department was live streaming a lot of their public meetings. Um, you know, I think about the school board live streaming their meetings and it, it, apples and oranges probably to any of the content that's in this group, but um, it really kind of depends on, on what the content is. We saw a lot of live streams of someone walking along the, the Apple Capital Loop Trail and just talking about their day. It's like, well, for, for 40 seconds. Um, it really kind of depends. It's like, I think that there's a, a place for live streams, um, but I think that it kind of it kind of comes down to the, the content itself. And I would say that if you're going to do a live stream, take a look at how that live stream does fit into your content strategy overall. And it goes back to the diversification of your content. Um, if you're only doing live streams, it's probably not a good route for you to go. But if you're posting na native video, if you're posting photos, if you're sharing content from your, your partner organizations, you're talking about customer testimonials, and then doing a live stream, it might be a really good fit for your strategy. Um, I mean, that's not super helpful, but I'm not right now I'm not seeing as many Facebook lives as we used to. Um, so this, the um, content frequency. Uh, that's a really good question. The work that we're doing, a lot of the work that we're doing with the local businesses and organizations is uh, what we refer to as brand awareness, just top of line stuff. Um, we kind of hover around three to five posts a week. Um, those three to five posts are, are always a mix, uh, 50 talking about ourselves, talking about our organizations and 50% talking about our community or stuff that's relevant to our, to our audience that's not about us. 
Um, that's on Facebook. On Instagram, it can go from three to seven. So it really kind of depends on, on what you're doing. If And again, it comes down to diversification. If you're posting seven sandwiches a week, then that might not be the best route for you to go. Um, if you have a good diverse um, content strategy, then posting every day is doable. Just be cognizant of the amount of time it takes. Um, there are scheduling tools within Facebook that are magnificent. And if you have a, if you've updated your Instagram to a business profile, you can now schedule Instagram through Creator Creator Studio or the new business suite, um, which is mind blowingly magnificent. Um, so, so if you're if you're doing anything beyond I think three to four, you're going to want to take a really close look at scheduling and making sure you're streamlining that process. But um, kind of a, kind of an open-ended answer, but, um, I don't, I, truthfully, I don't think that if you have two platforms, you can do, um, you know, one on one day and another platform the next and flip-flop so that it's not just inundating one platform with your content, if that makes sense. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Kyle says, no question. Mike, thanks for emphasizing all these positive examples of social media engagement. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. I think I don't see any other questions. I'll just ask one more just because I want to soak in all the information. Is there any articles or websites that you check in with regularly to stay up to date on like some of the social media tips and tricks? Yes. The one that I follow, the, I'm looking it up to make sure that I get the right one, the Social Media Examiner. Um, that is probably, to me, I find that to be the most relevant right now. And that's on Facebook. Um, and, and this is a great example of, of engagement. They're just asking questions. Whenever there's a new change on a platform or they offer a new, um, you know, a new um, tool, within that platform, they'll jump on there and they'll ask a question. So uh, here's, this was posted two hours ago. I've got it up. Instagram is going to allow you to remove single images from your carousel posts. Do you have this feature yet? And people are, people are interacting with it and social media folks are interacting with it. So I dive into the comments and I learn how people are using that. So it's been a really, really valuable uh, community for me um, I subscribe to their newsletter, uh, you know, do all the things, um, you know, outside of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like higher level stuff. I think Gary Vaynerchuk, like some of his earlier stuff is really fun to listen to because he talks a lot about, uh, don't talk about yourself, you know, set people up for the cell, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but just like keep people engaged, keep people on the line. So give them, give people stuff that they want to hear hear about. So, I mean, if you're a card detailer, show awesome pictures from Hot Rod Magazine, it's stuff that's relevant to your audience and it keeps people around and then tell them about your service. And that's a super salesy way to do it. But, um, you know, there is also, um, oh, uh, the name's eluding me. There's a book. Sorry, can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, start with Social Media Examiner and then go from there. How about that? Bodie McBoface. I said it one more time. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mike. All this information was amazing. Um, I did record it, so I'll edit a few pieces here and then upload it to our YouTube page for anyone who missed out on the presentation. But thank you so much for hosting today. It was really fun having you here. And thank you, everyone who registered and attended. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you being here. All right. You guys have 10 more minutes of lunch, so enjoy. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>